Hey guys, I am an unlikely hero and I am back once again in Stranded Deep. In today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 things I love about Stranded Deep. And I'm going to talk about 10 things I think could use a little bit of improvement. You know, I've been out here a while, all alone, and I've still managed to keep my sanity intact. I mean, just ask Wooly, he'll tell you. And I couldn't agree more, Wooly. That, that is a great point. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so how we're going to do this is we're going to first start with something that I don't really like about the game. And then we're going to follow it up with something that I really do like about the game. One thing I don't like about Stranded Deep is the lack of diversity of islands. You've seen one, you've kind of seen them all gets a little stale after a while. There's like three different islands with slight variations. But because things are similar, you can get kind of in this sort of groove after a while. And you feel really accomplished because of how fast you can clear an island. It's really fun stuff. You know, I kind of wish there was an item or weapon that took a few more components to make that was a little bit more powerful. For example, maybe a harpoon gun that takes a hundred duct tape to build. I think it would make going through these shipwrecks a lot more interesting since once you have the items you need, you're pretty much set. One of the things that's really great about Stranded Deep that even towards the end game, it still feels like a survival game. A lot of games like Wrath Subnautica have this problem. Once you get all the good stuff near the end of the game, really, you're not having to worry about water or food or any of that stuff anymore. You're pretty much good. But Stranded Deep always feels like a survival game. Always feels like you still need to drink, you still need to eat, you still need to protect yourself. You always feel vulnerable, which I think is a really good thing about the game. I am not crazy that you cannot make a map in-game. I mean, if your guy is capable of making a spear gun from some scraps and a lot of other junk, I'm pretty sure this guy can make a map. Now I admit, I am horrible with directions, so this is definitely not one of my favorite things about the game. The lack of map and direction heightens feeling of the isolation and makes the game feel more adventurous. Also, if you're good with a compass, you could probably draw your own map in real life adding to the realism. The game also has a cartographer that gives you a basic layout of the world. So even though the game doesn't have a map, it does include this little helpful tool. I feel like the base building is completely and utterly unnecessary. Don't get me wrong, I love doing it, I love building the buildings, but they don't feel like they really do anything. It can feel like an accomplishment, sure, but other than shielding yourself from the sun, there's really not much else you could do with it. While making farms and fuel stills in one place is optimal in my opinion, the game really encourages you to keep moving, especially at the beginning. The map is very large and intimidating at first, and it kind of stays that way throughout. Feels very realistic. The tool pouches are a pretty useless upgrade. Would be cool if there were upgrades such as more inventory space, a damage upgrade, or maybe a swimming speed upgrade. Maybe you could get these upgrades by like killing three great whites or something. Game sticks to its base and is pretty realistic at what you can and can't build with the materials available to you. For example, you cannot build a rocket launcher out of duct tape and rocks like some survival sims, which it can kind of cheapen the survival experience. Although there are some special locations in Stranded Deep, I wish there were more, and maybe some very rare drops you could come across. After a while, you realize that all the wrecks have the exact same rotation of 5 to 10 useless items. Except for Wooly here. Stranded Deep is a very chill, relaxing game. You can totally go at your own pace. There's no magic respawning shark that keeps chomping on your raft every 30 seconds. Such as in the game raft. There's a lot of different ways that you can choose to survive in Stranded Deep. How you choose to play is up to you. The gyrocopter was a huge letdown for me. I know you can fly and see from a high vantage point, but it's extremely slow, has no storage, and uses an ass load of gas. 
It pretty much took me the entirety of my game to finally find the parts for the gyrocopter. And then it turns out, it's kind of shit. The evolution of a player's raft is really cool. Starting from a little dinky lifeboat to a behemoth of a raft with sturdy storage chests. It's a pretty good feeling. Once you get that gas production going and the motor for your boat, you feel like an absolute boss. I wish there was a little bit more of a variety of land animals, or maybe even special variants. I cannot tell you guys how many boars and giant crabs I have slaughtered. It just gets a little old after a while, you know? I absolutely love the ocean life in Stranded Deep. Be it something dangerous like a tiger shark or as majestic as a whale, it is awesome. They do a really good job making the ocean feel dangerous and alive. This is definitely my favorite thing about Stranded Deep, easily. Trying to finally beat the game can be a little frustrating. At the end, it's easy enough to collect all the resources you need, but sailing all around the map trying to find all the bosses and it can be a huge pain in the ass. The fact that this game even has an endgame and bosses is really neat. You really have to have a good handle on the game and put in the time to actually finish it. So when you finally do finish it, it's going to feel like a really big accomplishment. Overall, my biggest problem with Stranded Deep is the lack of variety. I wish there were more items, more different locations. After a while, Stranded Deep can seem a little monotonous, and tasks can even feel like busy work. So after all my nitpicking, do I like this game? Of course I do! I just think that this game could be even better than it already is. Stranded Deep is made by a small independent company in Australia and is still in early access on PC as of 2021. While big budget games like Cyberpunk have huge amounts of problems, games like Stranded Deep handle extremely well. Beautiful graphics, small amounts of bugs and glitches, and it's wonderfully optimized. I've never had this game crash. It has an awesome soundtrack and is overall an extremely fun game to play. Stranded Deep gives you a true survival experience. No annoying NPCs blathering away about this or that. It's just you versus nature, shut off from the world, isolated but in control. I'm very excited about the future of this game and I really hope there are many updates and new things added in the years to come. What do you guys think about Stranded Deep? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to give me a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to get notified when I publish my next video. Whew. What did you think, Wooly? Wooly? Wooly! Wooly! I'm sorry, Wooly!